Growing up in upstate New York, I had always had a, uh, a love for the game of lacrosse. I started playing it when I was young. It's not one of the big four sports here, but you can just tell from the, the passion of the Thompson brothers and from the passion of the kids that were there that it's, uh, it's a really special sport and uh, I love the fact that it's, it's really taking off in our area. My name's Lyle Thompson. Uh, my, my Native American name is De Hasanunde. It means he's flying over us. I was born with a lacrosse stick. I've played lacrosse my, my whole entire life. Where, where I come from in central New York, a small reservation uh, called the Onondaga Nation, we, it's, it's sort of just what we do. All right, do you guys know where lacrosse came from? Indian. Yep, Native Americans. Every kid tries the game of lacrosse, and I've been fortunate enough to, to sort of stay around it for this long. I've been able been able to use the game as a vehicle to get to college and now play professional and and really um, my job my occupation is all based off of lacrosse so um, I love the game I love being around it whether it's doing camps whether it's playing the game whether it's in my backyard um, I touch my stick every day and, and um, that's sort of how I show my love for the game first things first give me your stance give me your stick take the two steps by the time you catch it the ball should be back here all I should have to do is release the ball. You know, it's, it's cliche to say you want to grow the game, but we do want to grow the game. We want to go to parts of the world, parts of, you know, the country that aren't necessarily um, hotbeds of the game of lacrosse and help instill the true cultural value of the game because from our point of view, that's, that's really being lost. Honoring the game and, and the spirit of the game um, is slowly diminishing because of how we're treating the game as, a, as sport. And to me, it's all about the cultural values which stem from respect, um, playing with a clear mind, having a clear mind, optimism, and ultimately just having fun. That's, that's my true state. That's where I always try to operate from. And that's where I, what I try to instill to the next generation. Show me your stick. Go. You'll hear it from a lot of Native Americans. We play the game for the creator. And what that means is we play the game for ourselves and we play the game with good intention, with respect. Um, so to me, that's what it means to, to honor the game, and that's what I try to do every time I step on a field with my lacrosse stick. Go! Lacrosse is, is um, it's definitely up and coming, and it's growing in, in places like Texas and California and Denver and Utah. So it's nice to come out here and see it myself. This is my first time being in Texas for a lacrosse camp anyways. and. Um, yeah, I mean, the talent's, the talent's there. What do you guys want to do with our last 10 minutes? Show us oh, that yes, 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 yes. I think we did a good job with our first session. We had the younger kids um, full of energy, and I love that because it gives me energy. It gives me, uh, gives me my own happiness inside. Um, so I like to experience each age group and just enjoy it with them um, because, to me, that's, that's where it starts to last. So we're out here at Sonora Park uh, stocking some rainbow trout. Yeah, last year was my first time fishing for trout in Texas. Uh, I'm up from up north, so it's a special opportunity for me when uh, you actually can catch a trout in Texas. It's just a good way to get anglers introduced to something different. Anything exotic or that you don't see every day, it breaks up kind of the monotony of bass fishing that definitely happens sometimes. They love it, we see them, and sometimes we'll even see the same angler from spot to spot. All right, on the board. Bigger than the lure. <laughs> Tungsten jig booger, that's just a trout killer. My dad took me fishing when I was a young boy and it stuck with me my whole life and it will until I pass from this earth. I remember the day that I saw it on social media. Um, you know, the first thing that we do too is start going through the comments. It was just a random photo that had been shared a billion times and so I start reading the comments and people are arguing, are they real, are they not real? And so we set up this story um, really just to find out if alligators do exist in North Texas, fact or fiction. 
Once you see something you've never seen before, I mean, you just get like this adrenaline rush. Jimmy Martin is a local Dallas Fort Worth wildlife photographer. He's captured it all birds, snakes, deer, but one of his recent posts got a whole lot of attention. Yeah, it immediately just took off when I posted it online. So it just blew up. Some people, you know, tell me like I photoshopped them here. This happened to be, you know, a 10 foot gator sunbathing on the pier and I was just like oh wow I've been seeing them every time I come out here now after seeing pictures like his circulating around online we decided it was worth checking out ourselves today I went over to Fort Worth's Nature Center and Refuge to see if I could find a gator and boy did I and I appreciate that there is a level of skepticism with all pictures that we see online but in the case of these alligators it's here they're here. Sam Kieschnick with Texas Parks and Wildlife says there's a stable population of a few dozen in both Lake Worth and Lake Louisville, as well as in the Trinity River that leads to Eagle Mountain Lake. So it's not hundreds and hundreds of them as they experience down in Houston, closer to the coast. Uh, this is all part of a corridor that they can move throughout those waterways. He says the reason North Texans may be noticing them more is all the recent rain causing high water levels and closer shores. But he also says it's possible people are just spending more time outside altogether. So I think, I hope that maybe that's why uh, people are seeing. And that more than anything, gators are a part of North Texas wildlife like any other creature. They're nothing to fear, but to enjoy. If you see an alligator, be aware of it. Treat it with respect. Don't harass it. Don't feed it. But I hope that you can celebrate it. I was at the Mesquite Farmer's Market when I ran across a guy that was making his own hot sauce, growing his own peppers, everything out of his house. I love hot sauce. It don't like me most of the time, but I like hot sauce, and I thought this would be an interesting story to tell. So I make uh, small batch handcrafted hot sauces. This is uh, the Carolina Reaper. This used to be the hottest pepper in the world up until recently. Uh, I like to grow my own stuff um, just because I know exactly what's going on with all my stuff. Um, when it comes to the super hot peppers, they're a little bit harder to source and they're a lot more seasonal. Uh, once the fermentation process is done, a sauce can come together pretty quickly. It, that's been fermenting almost for 30 days. I think uh, what makes a good hot sauce is uh, something that has a bit of heat but doesn't overpower what you're eating. The consistency is a little bit thicker than your typical hot sauce. Mm. That one's real good. You get real smoky, chipotle right up front. Uh, all the other spices, smoked spices kind of come in and then kind of finishes on that, you know, kind of peachy, slight peachy hint. So next up, we got the Mad Cow. I like to refer to it as, as a great everything sauce. But essentially, this is uh, the ghost pepper and garlic ferment with some uh, Texas sweet onions, uh, some chipotles and adobo, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. And this is on the super hot, so bear with me here. And now it's starting to heat up a little bit. We're in the process of moving to a commercial kitchen uh, where we're going to be able to produce bigger and bigger batches of hot sauce um, on a more regular basis. You know, I essentially am doing what I do because I love it. Um, and I want to essentially be the go-to hot sauce company here in Dallas.